Hi, I'm your host Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to one more week of the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. And this week, joining us from Cape Town in South Africa is Kevin Pedersen. Hi, Kevin. Welcome to the show. Hi, Vasco. So Kevin is a managing director, an agile coach, and international trainer for Growing Agile in South Africa. He is passionate about helping people connect to their purpose. And this is, as he says, best described in Growing Agile's vision to grow people and inspire ideas so that they can be the best version of themselves. And we do that by changing the way people think about work. And uh, I'm sure we're going to talk a lot about that this week here on the podcast. So, Kevin, let's start with the first question. Tell us a little bit more about yourself and uh, how did you end up becoming a Scrum Master? I originally started my career as a developer back in the late 90s when, you know, the Y2K bug was such a thing. I actually was brought in to be a developer to help fix that. And then throughout my career, I kind of uh, got bored of of learning a new language every six months. (laughs) So I turned more into like analysis and uh, project management and things like that. And I think how I got into Scrum Mastery was actually by accident. And I think there's a lot of Scrum Masters out there who kind of fell into this role by accident. And I was actually a systems analyst on, on a team. And then we heard about this new way of developing software called Scrum. Thought that was very interesting. And then the way they described it as, you know, being iterative and incremental was really what we were trying to do. We just didn't, didn't know how to do it properly or we weren't doing it very well. And then we heard, that, you know, you really need a Scrum Master to kind of uh, help with the process and the idea behind what a Scrum Master is really intrigued me. So I thought I'd put my hand up and say, hey, I'll give that a try. So that, that's basically how I became a first Scrum Master. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm sure many of our listeners will uh, find that the familiar story. Of course, Kevin, as we get started, very often we bump into some hiccups. And uh, if you're really trying to be a good Scrum Master, you're going to bump into those through your whole career anyway, right? Today's Fail Monday here on the podcast. And we like to explore stories where things got a little out of hand. Maybe some unexpected events happened and we failed. And it's important to recognize that failure is the start of a learning journey. And that's what we want to encourage our listeners to think about it that way. And uh, of course, we want to hear your story. So tell us that story, Kevin. I think one of the biggest failures as a a Scrum Master I had was um, early on in my career where I was actually working for a consultancy at the time. And uh, I was sent with a very small development team to a client to work on a project. And the client was the, the product owner. So the, person, the main person contact at this company was the product owner. I was the Scrum Master and a small development team. And what I found is that the team themselves were running like clockwork. They were, they were a team that were very used to working together. They knew Agile as well as I did, if not better. Everything was running smoothly. And I actually found myself that I had very little to do. But one of the impediments I picked up quite early was that uh, the product owner wasn't really performing their role as they should. Because it was the client, it was kind of a tricky dynamic. Yeah, how do you make it uh, a topic when it's the client that you need to change? Exactly. So one of my failures is I stuck to Scrum by the book and tried to be the Scrum Master without stepping into the empathetic view of this product owner doesn't really know how to be a product owner. So maybe we need to kind of step in and help her do the role. So tell us a little bit more about that. So you said you stuck to the Scrum book. And I imagine that maybe when the product owner was unable to create refined stories for the team, you just didn't do anything about it. Is that what you mean? So the idea was that, well, it's the product owner's job, right? And it's my job as the Scrum Master to coach the product owner. But if the product owner doesn't want to be coached or doesn't have the time to be coached, then what do you do? Like, I think now I'm a bit more pragmatic and say, meet the people where they are. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons I learned from this failure is I wasn't empathetic enough with that that client. Therefore, I was trying to stick to the Scrum Guide and say, well, the Scrum Master doesn't write the user stories. They they kind of coach the team and coach the product owner. So you kind of raised your hands and said, it's not my job. Not my job, right? (laughs) (laughs) So tell us a little bit more about that, though. I want to explore that phrase. Uh, It's a phrase we've heard quite often here on the podcast, meet the people where they are. If you had a time machine and you were able to go back to that situation, 
How would you do that? Translate that phrase for us in this particular story. The way I look at it is when you're working with people who don't have the experience of, of the role they're being asked to do, quite often we need to hold their hand and show them how to do the job. And rather than just uh, stand back and take the coaching stance, we actually need to take more of a hands-on approach. So it would be actually sitting with them and writing user stories with them, or maybe even doing some of the user stories yourself, right, with the team, and then saying, this is the kind of input we need. Can you help us craft these and make sure that we're actually on the right path? We'll do all the work for you. We just need your advice to know if we're on the right path. So rather taking that pragmatic, practical approach rather than like standing back saying, well, this is your job. This is what you need to do. And this was part of our contract, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's kind of where, what I mean. So I, I really like that story, especially because it's in the context of the product owner. Very often I, I face situations like this where product owners may not be inclined at all to work with the team and write the, the stories, but are happy to answer questions. Other cases, the POs are not to be seen anywhere, right? They are in whatever high-level meetings, busy stakeholders that don't really have time for the team. And uh, other times, they just don't know how to do it. They have no idea how to do it. Exactly, yeah. So one of the things that I very often come back to is this idea that Scrum Masters and product owners should build a partnership, uh, almost like a dynamic duo, right? The way I try to phrase it is that we are there, Scrum Masters and product owners, to serve the team. And it doesn't matter who ends up doing what, as long as we make sure we cover each other when necessary, right? Like the Scrum Master helps the PO, and sometimes even the PO helps the Scrum Master. Because, for example, in that story you just shared, if there were a blocker that uh, pertained to the company, the PO would probably be best placed to help unblock the team, right? 100%, yes. So these days, Kevin, how do you build that partnership between Scrum Master and PO? I think it's uh, with any relationship, it's, it's on a, you take it on a case-by-case case basis. It's, it's down to personalities, right? So I think the first thing you need to do is build, build up some trust between yourself and the product owner. And a good way to do that is to actually have a conversation and, and agree to how are we actually going to work together and then inspect and adapt on that, right? What we don't want to be is fighting for the team against the product owner. So the product owner is always the enemy. We actually want to, like you say, work together with them and help them understand maybe what the team is going through so that they can have a bit of empathy towards the team. And then also have some empathy towards the product owner and struggles that they're going through so that you can kind of help them maybe prioritize better so the team is actually focusing on the things that are important. With every product owner is different because you, what I find is product owners come from all different types of backgrounds. Some were project managers, some were analysts, um, some were even developers. So I don't think there is one way to do that, but I think trust is absolute key. Yeah, absolutely. And and building that chemistry with the product owner. So we have a course, the Coach Your Product Owner e-course uh, available for anyone that wants to take a look at it. I'll put the link on the show notes so that people can find it. There's uh, one of the things that you also talked about, right? Sometimes we, we need to help them prioritize. Sometimes we need to help them create the vision. Sometimes we need to help them get answers from other stakeholders. There's a bunch of other things that we need to help the product owners with. Yeah, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that with us, Kevin. My pleasure. Monday is about what we learn from our obstacles and our failures. But tomorrow is Team Tuesday here on the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast. We explore teams and their journeys, the habits they develop that threaten their performance, how each of our guests help their teams evolve, and the one key lesson they learned from that experience. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring. 